Hello everyone, this is another video tutorial in parametric design with Palette 3D and 3D Max. And in this video, we're going to focus on a curve controller. And we will see how to use the curve controller over an uh, array of curves, which basically means we're going to create a curve network, uh, which in that the, all the curves are working together. In this example, I'm using a curve as a reference and an array a series of curves, which as you can see, they vary in, in height. And then there is another array on top of these that connect each member of the, the first array into the member next to it. And uh, as you can see, everything works uh, together when I move the uh, vertices of the pad and I try to um, update the arrays. I'm also controlling the height of these curves uh, using a sl slider. So as you can see, if I move it up, uh, I can get them uh, like this, or I can make it flat when there is no projection. These are slightly up because this is the mean value I set for the slider is five. So that comes out from there. All right. So let's see how we can do such integrated design. And that's pretty much all about the uh, curve controller and parametric array link controller. So let's delete all this. I'm going to reset my scene. Well, the first thing is we have to decide on what level we want to control the curve. I would assume that the arch which uh, we're going to do is going to have the same width all the way along the pad and, and the only thing that differs is the height of the arch. So in that case, I'm just going to make a single line in top view. It's a vertical line, so if we divide it in two pieces using the divide option in segment. Just click on divide and then you get the new vertex in the middle of the segment. And you can go to uh, right view and then just pull that up and turn it to smooth or even uh, a busier vertex. Well, with a busier type of vertex in there, you have more control over the uh, the curve but I would I would assume that you go with the smooth for now and also if you would like to control uh, the distance between two, these two it would be the same technique as what I'm gonna do with this vertex in order to get the control over this vertex only you can use X4 modifier this allows us to basically move the vertex with a gizmo. The advantage of using X form is that, first of all, you don't have to go through all the vertices and you don't need to actually expose this information to parity. And also, if you're going to do a loft object, for example, you don't have to use the animate, which I showed um, in, in another tutorial. And basically, all you need to do is is to assign a controller and the gizmo of the X form. All right, now let's model our pad. Could be any kind of shape you want. You just draw something on uh... All right. Okay, just um, to have the proper proportion we're just going to scale this a little and I think this also needs to be higher all 
okay so select the vertex if you modify the shape uh, it's better to remove it remove the x form modifier and then add it again so the center point will be at the gizmo uh, position okay now let's uh, array this curve along the path since we're going to change this x form modifier we need to use uh, the copy method i would like to keep the original uh, object because i'm gonna do a loft object based on this later on and we go with 30 for now uh, we don't need now we don't need to get into the vertices so we say no to this question and as you can see i don't i don't see my vertices because i don't need them i just need to to have this gizmo in there and we'll show you in a in a minute that how to, how to control that so the first thing is to locate the the arches on um, the speed line we're, we're going to use a curve controller oops here we go we need also to rotate them along the pad as you know I'm going to rotate them in Z direction but uh, we need the convert controller to extract the scalar value of the rotation from a curve controller so you put the convert controller first which is vector and then from there we choose the curve controller for the vector and from the vector we extract the z component and in there we make sure that the pad is assigned to curve controller and the output is set to rotation all right they're already aligned to the curve but not in a direction that uh, which uh, we expected so uh, we need to rotate 90 degree so for that we just need to add 90 to this value coming out of from the cur convert controller this is what we do in math controller I keep the convert controller as sub object so the, the a is already has the rotation of the curve we just need to add 90 degree to it and then we update it all right everything looks fine except the last arches which is not rotating properly the reason is the last point of the curve doesn't have the rotation value to fix that we can we can choose our curve controller turn on the filter and pick both curve controllers and you can slightly offset from the end and see if this fixed the problem yeah all right switch off the filter and now at times for altering the the middle vertex or better say the x form modifier under x form you you should see the gizmo and then for that you will change the position of the gizmo just to show you clear idea of what is going to do i'm just adding the z value as in you can see the curves are changing accordingly so this is what we have to do we have to modify the z you can just go, go under the z position and for that i'm gonna choose a condition controller i can do it with the pattern controller but then i'll every time that i want to change the height of the curves i need to change the path the numbers inside the pattern but I can use a condition controller to to tell a para 3d that i want every other curve to move up as much as i would say in different variable for that we use the condition the condition controller is asking for a condition which is a boolean value and it, if this came true the value here is going to assign to the to the uh, z position and if this comes false the this value goes there so 
for the condition I can use a pattern basically you can use the pattern to create true and false value inside the pattern you just need to put one comma zero which is already there by default one means true and zero means false for the boolean type this is going to make every other one follows the tr uh, true value here. And for the true value, I can use a slider. So let's, let's make a slider. Here, right. Here we put it and we name it the height and the and then you give it default value like 25 I believe it's too big but uh, we can change it even later uh, let's go with 50 maximum all right to assign this slider to this channel you need a link controller so I'm just gonna link that using uh, external link because it's it's an external link since you're linking an, uh, objects from the array to something outside of the array you have to choose this external link and then you pick the slider and from this track view you should choose the value and then if it's not true the result is going to be zero mm, which that means the gizmo uh, will stay at default position. So let's update. Now you can see my curves are different in height. Every other one goes uh, 20 units up. All right. Okay. I need to create another array to connect these arcs with a small horizontal member. For that, what I need is only single line. I'm just gonna create that in top view. Well, make sure the both vertices are corner and the segment is line. Okay. Let's make it visible in viewport. And make it slightly thicker this array is going to be two dimensional array the first dimension since it's going to connect each two of these curves the number of the items in the first dimension would be one less than the number of items in this array which is 29 in my case and uh, for the other direction which is the the number of the segments between the arches i would go with 20 anyhow we can change it later and here we should say yes because we're going to connect uh, we're going to use the uh, controllers to modify the vertices all right let's see what happens if you uh, go under the vertices and assign a curve controller to the vertex number one and then pick one of the curves it doesn't matter which one there's a question asking for do you want to take all the curves inside this array or you just want to use the the, the curve which you picked I'm going to say yes because this is going to create a link between my array and this array and each items in the first dimension goes to each curve so if you say yes you will get instead of the curve here you will get uh, curves from array and this is a parametric array link which automatically link has been created by para3d and it's linked to the parallel line 001 which was the the array of uh, arches let's see here you need to you need to say d2 
which means that it will uh, array the, the lines based on uh, the second dimension over each curve. Let's update the array and see what happens. As you can see, each line goes to corresponding curve uh, since I have 29 lines in the first dimension, it covers up to the last curve, uh, one before last curve, I'm sorry, and then it divides the curves based on the number of the uh, items in second dimension, which is 20. So 20 goes to the curve and 29 goes to the array, uh, simple as this.